what is going on guys how are you all doing this is Yix here of Magnum Crypto and welcome back to another video so in today's video I want to talk about Kyber's Fed price reserve in a bit more detail they've got a medium blog post that they released a couple of weeks ago and I just want to go over that with in a bit more detail because I think it's very very important to understand that uh, to see where Kyber where Kyber's potential lies and how far they could really go uh, and how far the price could ultimately appreciate to. Um, and uh, I'm just going to have a look at the technical analysis a little bit first uh, to see what's happening there. And a little shameless plug, if you haven't already done so, please follow me on Twitter and I'll be sure to follow back. Um, with that out of the way, that little shameless plug, um, let's have a look at Kyber's pricing. So, you know, as you can see, Kyber has been on a very, very strong uh, ascension since the beginning of the year. You know, since about January, they've appreciated, you know, almost 6x, which is absolutely amazing. Um, two very, or three strong drives. Um, you know, at the moment, on a weekly, they have rejected off a point of resistance and have now hit some support level but I was playing around with the Fibonacci tool and you can see that it's actually kind of it's actually really really respected the Fibonacci um, pattern because you can see from this initial drive from this low up until the end when they rejected um, it's hit that 0.618 level to perfection now obviously it's wicked to the next level 786 but it's it's really hit that level perfectly and even if you if you look at the extension you can see that it's literally been hitting that to perfection the 618 there and then it kind of stopped at the 786 so absolute perfection and even if you if you go to the next um the next drive you can also see if you use the low over here as the bottom and the high as the top you can see that it's hit the 618 level again um, so with that in mind I drew another Fibonacci um, and use this top so use this as the low and this as the top so there's potential for a retrace to occur um, down to the 618 level at least before we go higher um, these retraces are always healthy and it allows the the price to kind of basically recharge and then kind of keep going so I am looking out for that so volume has dried up since we burst past to break past this level of resistance so if volume continues to stay low we might be going down and you know hitting that 618 level on the Fibonacci sequence which is around you know 0.83 so it's a possibility I'm looking out for it so just pay attention to that so now with that out of the way let's have a look at the um, Kyber FPR blog post on-chain market making for professionals as it said this is in regards to the FPR which is on-chain market making for professionals and advanced developers so I've highlighted a lot of stuff here which I'm going to go over Obviously, if you want, you can read the full um, blog post, um, but I only highlighted key parts that I think are relevant for me to explain um, what this is all about and how beneficial it is and how important it is. So market makers running FPR provide liquidity for about 70 to 80% of all trades happening on Kyber. So it's, a, it's an integral part of Kyber's network at the moment. These advantages include high capital, slash gas efficiency, immediate exposure to the widest set of takers in DeFi, and exact control over pricing strategies and risk exposure and a range of safety, safety mechanisms. An example of how Kyber's FBI allows for much higher capital efficiency compared to other unchained systems is reserve operators can use the same quote currency invent inventory to market make for up to 14 tokens. In contrast for 
for automatic market makers and order book systems, separate quote, currency inventory will need to be set aside for every different token order. So this is this is basically the summary, and we're gonna, gonna, we're gonna go into more detail as in how exactly they provide these things. We believe bringing professional market makers on chain will greatly improve the liquidity in DeFi for the space and drive innovation forward. Kybus FPR is our technical platform for professional market makers and we are fully committed to helping them get started. So market makers obviously are essential for any market because they are basically like the glue within the network. They connect the buyers and sellers um, and Kyber is obviously focusing on them trying to make it a lot easier for them uh, and this will just you know provide that oil in the engine to for everything to run much more smoothly so opportunities in market making on chain namely many DeFi apps and use cases can only take liquidity from fully on-chain protocols whereas Kyber obviously supports advanced fully on-chain market making since smart contracts only talk to smart contracts, decentralized dApps can only use on-chain liquidity to form in innovative smart contracts enabled DeFi functions such as flash loans, on-chain liquidation, and portfolio rebalancing. As such, market makers who want to cater to these use cases can only do so by provisioning liquidity on fully on-chain protocols. So that's the key part here. You can't market make off-chain for these deep DeFi dApps. It's got to be on-chain and uh, obviously that's Kyber's speciality. Also, despite the strong, the strong growth of DeFi over the last year, market making on-chain remains relatively untapped compared to market making on centralized exchanges. So it's still a very small market and it hasn't really been reached um, by a lot of different protocols. And Kyber is already one of the leading um, protocols within the space. So the fact that they're working on it to improve more and more just shows how much of, of an advantage, how much of a lead they're going to have if anyone else tries to get on board or if anyone else tries to compete. For example, most market making strategies on centralized exchanges that are based on a high turnover could struggle to average one basis point of profit per volume. Whereas professional market makers can very often generate profits close to 50 basis points on their volume. For example, Kybus FPR averaged about 35 basis points of profit per volume traded in 2019, about 1.2 million ETH. So this is to any professional market makers that are looking at this, they're thinking there's going to be such a massive market for me to make profit on. So this is going to be all the more incentive for them to come on board and leave whatever kind of market making they're doing in other sectors and move to this because of the amount of profit they're going to gain if they get started. Again, incentives galore. Kyber's, Kyber FPR for professional market makers. So this is, uh, we're going to do some comparison uh, with automatic market makers and on-chain order books. So the different type of market makers. AMMs and on-chain order book systems sufficient for retail investors are sufficient for retail investors but have major shortfalls for professional market makers due to, to a lack of capital efficiency and control over other pricing strategies. So a lot of times, as they, as they said, these other market makers are simply you know, ill-equipped to actually be efficient um, to do this job. So that's another important part. They, they just don't have the tools to actually be efficient in market making um, on chain. Um, and AMMs use an algorithm that automatically provides a tradable price, but offer no control over trading strategies, limited pr protection against impermanent losses, and only provide sufficient liquidity for token pairs that are already sufficiently liquid. Um, so you know, that's kind of the chicken and the egg problem, you know, which comes first. You can't just have a, a, a liquid, completely liquid market to operate in. Uh, Kyber is actually allowing for market makers to, to do a good job when the market isn't liquid already. So they're going to just create a liquidity using Kyber's um, tools. 
In addition, AMMs require a relatively high amount of token inventory locked up to provide liquidity. On-chain order books, on the other hand, are too gas and capital efficient, inefficient to be used for market making. Um, so, you know, this is a nice table of um, a comparison between the three. So it talked about inefficiency um, over here and why F FPR is much more efficient. So you can see here, compact, the feature that they have is compact batching and that, that allows for very frequent updates. Whereas for order books, every addition and removal of, of an order requires gas. So you can see that, you know, you can have multiple orders and with the order book, you have to, you know, need gas for every single um, order. Whereas with FBR, you can batch orders, orders and use and do it as a single um, transaction, which is obviously a lot more efficient than what order books uh, allow. And the same with the capital inefficiency, you need to, for, for the order books, you need to provide equivalent quote currency for every token. Whereas with um, Kybus FP, FPR, you can mark and make for up to 14 tokens with a single quote currency inventory. And we're gonna go into that a little bit more down below. So just to go over that kind of uh, single quote for, with 14 tokens, usually for on-chain order book platforms such as Oasis Trade, the token and ETH amount in the order has to, has to exist and be locked up by the liquidity provider immediately with the placed order. For example, an Oasis trade for 100 ETH of orders, you need to commit 100 ETH and for five different token pairs, you might need 500 ETH worth, right? Uh, the liquidity provider will sub subsequently need to wait for the orders to be filled. In comparison, market makes on Kaiba only commit inventory as needed, right? That's the big difference, as needed. Um, whereas with um, Oasis, they need to be locked up. The FPR on Kyber allows much more efficient use of token inventory since ETH committed to the FPR can be used for all the tokens that are market makers on this Kyber reserve. For example, 100 ETH committed to Kyber can be used for all different token pairs. In addition, even if ETH is pulled to cater for all tokens on Kyber, ERC20 tokens can reside on another address to allow liquidity providers to market make on multiple platforms at the same time. So, as an example, to put $1,000 on orders for 10 tokens, Oasis, um, 10,000 worth of ETH is required, but with Kyber, $1,000 worth of ETH is required. So you can see, you know, with Kyber's FBI, you'll have, you know, in, in this example, $9,000 more dollars worth of ETH um, available to use for other things, whereas, with Oasis, you know, that $10,000 worth of ETH is all locked up uh, and can't be used for anything else. So just to go back to the first, um, so obviously market makers want, they need access to buyers, right? To, to market make to. With Kaiba, you're gonna have immediate exposure to the widest range of DeFi takers. So what we spoke earlier about in terms of, you know, DeFi apps, uh, in terms of liquidity, you know, it's got to be the it's got to be on chain uh, market. The, the, most of the market makers at the moment uh, operate off chain, and Kyber operates on chain, where all the DeFi DApps operate on. So by using Kyber, you'll have access to all these different uh, DeFi uh, DApps and and what have you. So market makers require a robust pool of takers to absorb the liquidity they provide. Kyber is the most used and most integrated token swapping endpoint for wallets, dApps and aggregates in the entire DeFi space with over 100 integrations, uh, 1 billion dollars in total trading volume and 1 million transactions since launch. FPRs are integrated into this network as soon as they are deployed. So straight away they've got access to all of this which, which is an absolute enormous amount of uh, takers um, for, for market makers to provide to. This allows market makers who set up Kyber FPRs to get the widest access to all the DeFi applications, traders and retail investors in the space from day one. So all of this, you know, um, 
these professional market makers could have access to straight away. Whereas a lot of the other, you know, markets that they can market make for won't have this kind of, you know, won't have this many takers to provide to. So we just spoke about this already. This is another important one, flexible utilization of token inventory. And this kind of goes with the, you know, the efficiency part. Um, besides being able to use one quote inventory for many tokens to market make for many pairs on Kaiba, the token inventory can also be used on many other use cases simultaneously. Includes being used, including being used to market make on other exchanges or other advantage of the inventory like interest, voting, pairing, staking. So you could have, you know, your pool of liquidity and it doesn't have to be locked up for just one purpose. It can actually be used to, to get interest on, to vote, to, to stake with. So that in, in itself, you can use all that liquidity for many different ways. Um, I'm trying to think of an ex another example to, to use this for. It's like, it's like, you know, let's say, you know, when you're talking about food, you can have, you can eat fruits, uh, oranges, bananas, whatever. And instead of throwing all that skin away in the bin, you can actually use it for compost uh, and put it in the soil. So you're getting many different uses out of that kind of fruit and instead of just the one single use, is, which is to eat it. And that's exactly what they're doing here. So another massive incentive for market makers to come on board because they can not only earn money on their, you know, pool of liquidity, their reserve, they can also, you know, use it uh, to provide liquidity to, to takers. And that's obviously a major advantage for over other on-chain systems like, like Oasis or Uniswap, where they cannot do that. So gas efficient batch price update mechan mechanism. Um, for example, if an operator wants to market make for 30 tokens, they typically need to place 30 orders for each token, as well as add or remove a large number of orders every day given the high volatility of prices in the crypto space. Every order being added or removed is an individual gas event, making, making maintaining small orders or a large number of pairs highly inefficient. This makes the tr traditional order book unfeasible for professional market making on chain, particularly for many tokens. So again, it's the, it comes back to being ill-equipped. You know, if, if the case is that, you know, you have to pay gas for every single transaction, then obviously that's very inefficient and a lot of market makers wouldn't want to get involved. But with the tools that Kyber is providing with FPR, which makes it efficient and you can actually do the job properly, um, by batching all these orders together. So, you know, they're innovating very much in this space and that's why it's going to be much easier for market makers to do their job properly here. FPR provides a mechanism that feeds the price for tokens in batches, allowing operators to update their price for all tokens with a single transaction. This quoting mechanism allows for price changes to be pushed frequently for a large number of tokens, enabling MMs to, to always maintain current prices on chain because they're not, you know, being um, prevented. They're not being stopped to to actually provide the best price um, because of the, the lack of tools that they had. Algorithms for pricing, rebalance, and exposure. FPR operators have total control over their pricing algorithm because they determine the price of chain and feed them to the contract. They also have total control over their algorithms to rebalance their inventory. For example, operators can easily withdraw excess inventory, sell them elsewhere, and buy different sets of invent inventory to deposit, deposit to the contract. You know, another good tool that they, they're allowing with the FPR. So here, here are some of the other functionalities that, you know, FPRs allow. This is the innovation that FPR provides market makers. Um, very, very important advantages over the others. So catalyst, fee simplif simplification and native rebates. More incentives for professional market makers. So in catalyst there will be a set of major upgrades to make it easier for professional market makers to set up FPRs in Kyber. Some of these updates have been discussed in prior posts but here's some reiteration. 
Network fee will become part of the trade, so reserve operators do not need to worry about holding KSC for fees and changes in KSC value. Network fees will now be divided between DAO rewards and KNC burning and rebates for reserves. This provides predictability of fees and revenue and streamlines operations for market makers. Initially, these reserve rebates will be allocated exclusively for FPRs based on their portion of trades facilitated in order to compensate for their dedication and contribution to the Kyber ecosystem. So again, that initial surge, they really want to incentivize, them, incentivize as many to come on board. So they're getting as many rewards as possible at the beginning. And the network fees and proportion of rebates will be decided by the Kyber DAO, um, the decentralized autonomous organization. Uh, market makers can easily vote and participate in governments to provide to produce the optimal outcome. And top performing FPRs that facilitate the largest amount of trade volume may also receive additional rebates, grants beyond the native catalyst rebates. So again, obviously this is creating more competition, more incentive to, to become the best, to become efficient. Uh, and the better you are, the more rewards you'll get. So there's massive incentive to, to be a top performer. And last but not least, reserve routing. So this will likely spread out liquidity between reserves, allowing new reserves to gain a share of the trades if they offer competitive rates, providing better overall liquidity for takes in the process. So that will be all for this video. I just wanted to cover um, Kyber's FPR in a little bit more detail because I think you know, it's such an important part of, of um, Kyber, the fact that they're taking market making to the next level, they're providing all these tools and incentives for them to come on board. This is why it's such a, a, a leading protocol within the DeFi space. And these upgrades are only gonna allow more tools, more incentives for market makers to come on board because one, their job is gonna be a lot easier and efficient also they're going to be highly rewarded for for coming on board and providing their service so you know it's only going to be up up and upwards for kaiba and from now on uh, and hence why i'm very bullish on kaiba and definitely you know their previous high will be smashed during the next bull market yeah i'm just very bullish on the on the kaiba protocol i'm just very bullish on kaiba uh, and yeah the future is up from here so that'll be all for this video i hope you got some value from that and i'll see you in the next one peace